Yeah, yeah. Looking at my watch and say it's time to get it. Yeah, talking about my guidance every day. I'm... Hey, good morning, good morning. How y'all doing? It's Alonzo, Ozo, Soul Ministry. Back with another message. I'm at home, man, South Carolina, Columbia. And I've uh, been enjoying the time. I just got in yesterday. As you can see, I'm sitting in the car. I didn't want to, I didn't want to wake my wife or my son up to get interrupted while I was trying to record this video. Anyway, but this, my car is almost like my traveling soundproof booth. booth. <laughs> So I, I make do what you make do what we got. The reason I do these things the way I do is because of uh, my traveling, man. The way my lifestyle is set up and my calling also. Um, as I've said before, my call I've been ordained as a pastor, and uh, I am gifted in teaching, which is a blessing. Um, but typically, when people use their this particular gift, they're stationary. They are in one place, but I'm not. So instead of trying to make or wait until my life circumstances dictate or are better to where I can be in one place and do these things, I don't know about y'all, but sometimes you just gotta, you just gotta, you just gotta make do with what you got. You gotta make the best of what you have. So um, if anybody out there has been putting something off, waiting for the the right day to do this or that. Let me be a witness to you that there's never there's never a perfect time. There's never the right day. Sometimes you just got to get things done. You got to do it with the best that you have. Um, but yeah, so let's get into this message, man. And I want to we're going to start off in prayer. Heavenly Father, holy is your name. And we pray that your will be done. As we in, are still in the book of Matthew, verse 20, chapter 24. I pray that you speak to your people. These verses speak directly to the times that we are in, to the challenges that we've been facing. You give us some insight and you let us know that these things are to come. So may your people not be troubled. May your people look to you and be of faith, Father. And understand that these things are to come. Not that just there are to come, but they're here and we face these things. But I pray that you give your people a spirit of peace spirit of understanding and you also guide them and let them know what they are to do in their day-to-day -day lives be with us as we study your word father in jesus christ's name we pray amen all right people so look we're in matthew chapter 24 we're gonna just do verses 1 through 14 i don't want to try to get through too much scripture like i did in the last one um i end up rushing skipping over some things not going into enough detail on some topics and then that causes you to not absorb as much as as much as you could but uh anyway without further ado we're gonna jump right into this word so hey really really hone in on what these scriptures are saying verse 1 chapter 24 and jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple so as we saw in the last verse jesus was he was in the temple and he was being accused of the fair, the religious leaders. And he went into some teachings and then he just rebuked them. And this last chapter in verse 20 and chapter 23, he was rebuking the religious leaders, even to the point where he was letting them know that because of them, not only would they not make it into the kingdom of heaven, but neither would the people they were teaching make it into the kingdom of heaven, which is very troubling. So that was one of the main things to keep take up from the last video. But they're still in the temple. And uh, in verse two, and Jesus said unto them, well, they, they just walk out of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, see ye not all these things. Verily, I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and at the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. So they leave the temple. They Jesus shows in the temple and tells them, look, not one stone on this thing is going to be left unturned. So they came to him privately while he was on the Mount of Olives and asked him, what should be the sign of your coming? Because he told them that when he when he returned, these things, you know, would be the, the end of the, the end of days or the judgment. 
and they're asking them what, what's going to be your sign they want to know because he told them that in their age these things would come to pass age meant um basically a period of time okay but he told them these things would come to pass in his age so they're asking them what is going to be a sign and jesus responds to them in this way in verse four take heed that no man deceive you so the first thing he tells you is to not be deceived deceit is when people are deceived we're talking about lies right or hidden truths or whatever the case is manipulation we know that satan the devil is the father of all lies yahashua tells us that right so if you're being deceived if you're being lied to know that's of the devil that's of satan right and not to say that that person is satan or is the devil but just as peter was used by satan when jesus was telling the disciples that he had to be crucified and resurrected right it's the same way that the people of us around us even us can be used by the enemy and to let lie right or that gossip or that slander so recognize that slander gossip um lying deceit those are all things of the enemy that's that's the spirit of the enemy y'all like i don't think we recognize how deep that is so recognize that the spirit of the enemy is the is a deceitful one okay for many shall come in my name saying i'm christ and shall deceive many okay so we don't really well i didn't really consider um the how serious that verse is there many shall come in my name right saying i am christ and shall deceive many i have personally seen or was invited okay so i i met i traveled a lot right i met a guy and uh long story short fast forward um he shared some some things with me someone he was listening to and when i went to listen to this gentleman um we got to be careful, y'all. We got to be careful. This gentleman was teaching them that Christ was already born. He was here on earth and uh, he was speaking as if he was him. And we know this to be false. Why can we know this to be false? Because the word of God tells us differently. Yahashua told us when he returned and said he would come like a thief in the night. Right. But he said he would be in the clouds. For all to behold from the east to the west. So the whole world is going to see him when he comes. It's not going to be in a private place, a secret place. He said, if he, if somebody says, hey, look, behold, Christ is in the desert place, a, a place departed. He said, don't don't listen to that kind of thing. So we got to be armed up in the scriptures so we know we can we can detect when these falsehoods, when these lies are being spoken. We can see the enemy. Because all he can do is lie. That's his main, that's it. That's his tactic. It's deception, lying, right? So if we know if it's not in accordance with the truth or what the scriptures say, it's of the enemy. All right, so he said, many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. Many will be deceived in these times, right? And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So he's saying you're going to hear of wars and rumors of wars, but don't be troubled. That's one of the main messages for, for these scriptures also. Now, all this, all this stuff is heavy, but see that you be not troubled. Troubled is um, frightened, right? Stricken with, with fear. Fear is a monster, y'all. Um, I've I've read, man, that people, humans, we only got two emotions. And fear is one of them, and love is the other. So we can understand that if something doesn't come out of love, then it comes from fear. And vice versa, right? Remember that in your day-to-day -day dealings with people, right? Because if it ain't love, it's fear. And then fear breeds jealousy, envy, hate, content dissensions all that stuff right but he said be not troubled think about what yahashua was saying right now he's saying there's going to be wars there's going to be rumors of wars there's going to be people deceiving saying that they are christ and what did he say 
Don't be frightened. <laughs> How is that humanly possible? Don't be frightened. We're seeing wars. We know what comes with war. People dying. You know, we see bombings. We see, you know, uh, digital threats and all this stuff. We see all sorts of informational wars going on around us on a day to day basis. People lying about being Christ. He said, don't be troubled. And then later on, we'll see he's talking about famines, earthquakes, all this stuff, all the stuff that we're seeing today. And we won't get in a little bit more detail, but he said, be not troubled. That was the first instruction that we got is don't be frightened. Don't be troubled because all these things are to come to pass. So as you're watching the news, as you're hearing the, the new, the next thing, right? Yahashua, the mo the son of the most high God tells us, the disciples, the believers, the first instruction is don't, don't be troubled. Don't be afraid. And he's going to say why you don't want to be. Okay. But well, let's get back into this thing. For nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. So nation here is, uh, is, is a little, it's not tricky, but it's different from what you might think, right? So when we use nation, we think about, um, United States of America, Canada, um, Brazil, Nigeria. We think about countries when people say nation, because that's how English speaking countries use the word. That's not what the word means here, even though, yep, it's in English, whatever. From the Greek, nation meant, and I'm going to go to my note on this, but I ain't write it down. Oops. But anyway, it meant, <laughs> it meant, um, blood, basically bloodlines or factions, multitudes of people. I did write it down. Yep. Eth ethnos. Sweet. <laughs> so it meant eth ethnos was the word that was used. It meant multitude associated living together, different people living together or people of like the same genus or a group of people uh, gathered together. For example, way back in the Old Testament, nation would have been a bloodline. So we're talking about the different tribes of Israel. We're also talking about same same nature tribe or associated living together so if we were to look at our country america right and we said nations what could we could be talking about we could be talking about it could be using it for race right it could be using it for people associated with the same belief system or the same thought pattern right vaxxers anti-vaxxers republicans democrats or you know liberals conservatives um all lives matter black lives matter blue lives matter um all these different factions sects whatever you want to call them whatever words you want to use those can and from what i'm seeing right now can be considered nations right okay so nation against nation kingdom against kingdom now we're going more broad kingdom of king kingdom against kingdom is more like countries right versus other countries or rulers against other rulers wars and rumors of wars okay and we still in verse seven there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in various places in diverse places so there's going to be famine starvation pestilences right we're going through that right now covid and whatnot right and earthquakes in various places so he's saying famine pestilences earthquakes wars and rumors of wars when we look at our world today this is exactly what we're seeing when we turn on the news this is exactly what we are seeing right but he said don't be troubled so don't get caught up in this wave of fear don't get caught up in it he said don't be troubled by it right yes um it affects us it's not saying that we're going to be exempt from it. So understand that just because you're believing on me, these things ain't going to touch you. You're going to still hear about wars, rumors of wars. You might get caught up in a conflict one day. You know, he's saying, don't be troubled. These things are to come. All these things are the beginning of sorrows, right? Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, deliver you up to tribulation, 
and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. He's talking about being persecuted, being killed, being delivered up for your system of belief, for believing in Jesus Christ, for believing in God. Now, we're not facing that right now in the United States of America, right? There's some things that's, that's happening that, that you know, sometimes in, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking this could be a precursor, right? And when I say a precursor, this is just my observation is that there seems to be conflict upon conflict upon conflict that's building up, that is creating more and more tension right here in our country. And when I say that, um, for since the beginning of this country, we've had race con racial conflict, black versus white because of slavery and that sort of thing, right? That has been um, agitated over these last few years. Yep, it's always been there. It's never gone away, right? But now the pot is being mixed up. It's being stirred up, right? And last year more so than, than this year, but that was a, a hundreds of year old conflict that never went away. It's just kind of been at the you know, under the surface, kind of brewing. And then beyond that, then you had, you know, last year with COVID hitting and then all the racial tension being stirred up, then the vaccine, right? So, well, I'm gonna back up a little bit. First you had Black Lives Matter pop up, then you had All Lives Matter pop up or Blue Lives Matter pop up. And now you got these groups at war with one another, right? Nation against nation, okay? And then you got um, the vaccine, you know, people who believe one thing versus another. And now these people are, they're bumping heads, right? Trump supporters versus non-Trump supporters and they're bumping heads. And we can say, okay, whether well, it's the media's fault and it's this person's fault and it's that person's fault, right? No one is forcing you to be arguing <laughs> or to, or to, uh, be in conflict with another group of people. No one is forcing people to make any of these decisions. People are making their own decisions based on what they believe, right? But again, your hospital says, don't be troubled about this thing. Don't be troubled. It's going to happen. What we got to realize is that as believers, that should not be us. That's what we need to focus on is that, okay, yep, these things are going to happen. I'm not supposed to be troubled. I see them happening. Now I can recognize what's happening. Right. I can understand that this is supposed to be and I can choose to not be a part of it. I can choose to not be a part of it because as a believer, we shouldn't be getting caught up in that kind of thing. Why? Because we focus on the most high God. We focus on love. Right. Loving our neighbor as ourself. OK, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Love the most high God first with all your heart, mind and soul and then love your neighbor as yourself. So if you're getting caught up in any of these conflicts, you're not you're not exemplifying what a believer should be. Right. All right. So. All these things are the beginning of sorrows, then it should deliver you up to be afflicted. I read something the other day, man. That, well, really earlier today that said every day about this was from January of this year. It said every day, 12 people are killed. About 12 people are prosecuted and about five people are kidnapped or abduct, abducted for what they believe in, for specifically Christianity. It's not happening in America yet. Oh, it had, it, you know, but there's a list of countries, which I would say, go, go take a look at that, man. It's, 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 it's interesting stuff. But on a daily basis, these are the numbers of the people that are being prosecuted, killed, kidnapped, solely based on what they believe in. Um, we got it again. We got a sweet here in America, man. We, Again, you see me record videos out on the beach talking about the Most High God, talking about Jesus Christ, you know, and I don't have to worry about that kind of thing. Um, yeah, there's some, you know, from person to person or different groups or whatever the case is in this country or people, even people that I know, there's some, you know, you shouldn't be a believer because of this or you shouldn't. Be, oh, what about this? And what about that? Ain't nothing. That's just people disagreeing. I could care less about that stuff. But he's saying here that people are going to be killed. They're going to be getting delivered up to be prosecuted. Like they're going to be, they're going to be going through it solely for believing. All right. These things are to come. 
right? And you should be hated of all nations for my name's sake. So eventually it'll get to a point to where of all nations, all multitudes of associate, all associated people will come against Christianity. Okay. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. So <laughs> people are going to be hating each other, which, you know, we already see betraying one another, delivering another person up. Hey, that person over there, you know, so-and-so, yeah, they're a Christian. <laughs> they're a believer going and go, going up in their house. You know, he said these things are to come and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Pay attention to that one. Because iniquity, iniquity is lawlessness as opposed to, not as opposed, as it relates to God's law. So because of the conditions of the world, fear is going to be rampant. Pestilences, earthquakes, conflicts in diverse places, people being delivered up to be killed, right? Because of the lawless, the state of the law, excuse me, the lawless state of the world, people's love will wax cold. Their hearts are going to grow thick, right? They don't want, they won't know what love is anymore, right? They're going to go, go grow cold from that. And in that state, right? What is easy for people to do? Lies, manipulation, and deceit. These are the kinds of things that are easy to be done when people are in a state of paranoia. They don't know where to look. They don't know who to trust. For all, this person tried to do this. That person tried to do that. They fighting over here. It's a state mentally, emotionally, you're in disarray. So any lie that sounds good, anything that sounds good, people going to stick to it. They're going to take to it and they're going to run with it right in that state is when false prophets shall arise then you're gonna see people popping up well they've already been popping up for a while now but it's gonna be he said they'll now people are gonna be deceived by these false prophets why because they're looking for something that they can trust they're looking for something that they can love they're looking for hope is what these people are looking for and these people that are coming to them lying to them right they're gonna they're gonna fall for the okie doke they're gonna get duped because they because that's what they're looking for. And remember that about human nature because that ain't just happening worldwide and with false prophets, but that happens to us, to you on a day-to-day -day basis. You're going through a trial, you're going through a tribulation, maybe it's health problems, maybe your business is having some issues, financial trouble, house stuff going on in the house, whatever the case is. And somebody come over there, you know, while you're in the state of disarray or you're in the low place and they speak some lies to you, some soft, sweet lies. Now you're getting carried away in adultery. <laughs> Come on, God, please. Now you now you're getting carried away, away from the most high God because you in the state because mentally you you all jacked up. Right. That's when the enemy sneak in is when you weep. Remember when he tempted Jesus in the wilderness. He came to Jesus after he fasted for 40 days and he was hungry. He was hungry. And he came to him and said, you the son of the most high God, turn this bread, turn this stone into bread. Right? What did Jesus say? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. These scriptures, these lessons will deliver you from your trial. Right? You go through your trial while harnessing, while embodying, while writing it up in your heart what the word of God tells you to be. And you use that to combat your trial. You don't go off how you feel. You don't go off the lies and the deception people are telling you. We got to be grounded in his word so that when these tribulations come, we can pass these things. All right. Where was I? That wasn't even part of the message. Anyway. Okay, 11, any and false, many false prophets shall ri rise and shall deceive many. And then 12, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. That's what we're seeing right now today. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. 
So he's saying this gospel, these verses, right? So get what he's saying. He's saying these very verses in those times will be preached for witness to show that thousands of years ago, this was written. Now, thousands of years in the future, these things are happening. Okay. And when that happens, then these scriptures right now will be preached for witness unto the nations, unto the multitude, the genuses. I hope y'all getting this right. And he said, then, then the end shall come. <laughs> so if you start hearing messages like this more rampant, you might want to get your ears peaked up. You might want to start paying attention. But just recognize what Yahashua was saying. Re recognize what these verses are saying. Be cautious, man. Be cautious in your life. Again, store this word up in your heart and make sure we're working, we're living this thing out as believers. Because what are we we're supposed to be the light of the the light set up on the hill, the salt of the earth. Right? We got guidance, people. We got guidance. These things show scripture showed us exactly what to do. He tells us exactly what's coming. We don't know when. But we know what. So what it was supposed to do is get on our post. Get on your post. Get on your job. What are you supposed to be doing? You have a calling. You have a gift. Right? Many are called. Few are chosen. Why? Because the ones that are called, they show up and they don't want to change clothes. They don't want to change themselves. Come on, man. All these, all these things work together. All these scriptures, all of these parables, they all work together. And it's a story of your life, of my life. That's what it's supposed to be. Many are called, few are chosen. Get on your post. The watchman watcheth in vain unless the Lord blesses. Right? So he's already given you a gift. He's already told you what to do. It's up to you to do it. Get on your post because when he come, we don't know when he coming back. But when he come, if you ain't found on your post, we already know what the, we already know what the judgment is going to be. He told us, he is, read the scripture. I, see, read the scripture. Read the scripture. I'm going to end this video there. That, this is probably the longest one I've ever done, man. But anyway, like, um, share, subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification button. So as we're doing these videos, you'll get notified of them. And uh, hey, we, praise God, we've uh, launched some social media stuff. I've been having a lot of help with that. So hey, praise God for that facebook business page we got a facebook group now specifically for soul service for these youtube videos I, instagram and instagram tv that stuff is getting launched also so get a part of it be a part of the community man just hey communicate with us if you want to send us an email of the soul just like it sounds of the soul ministry at gmail.com i want to hear you guys comments feedback comment on this video i'll interact with you you know Whatever questions that you got, whatever uh, things you may be going through, you can create a fake email and send it to me. I don't care, man. I just want to hear what the people of God are going through because it's my passion to help those people go get through it. That's that's really one of my passions. OK, because the tribulations that I've gone through, the trials that I've gone through, the way that I've had to change over these 35 years, whatever the case is, can help somebody. It can help somebody. That's why I'm writing. Because the most high God told me to. That's why I'm writing. That's why I'm doing these videos. Is because one, at least one person can hear this thing and start to change their life. And end up doing something just like I'm doing right now. Trying to serve the most high God. From where I was, from where I came from, to where I am right now. If you only knew. There's one or two of y'all that might know. But if you only truly, truly knew. And the only person who can really, truly know. It's me because it's, it was my heart. It was my mind. Anyway, I want to talk y'all to death. Like, share, subscribe, communicate with us, jump into the community, man. Welcome. Nothing but love here. Heavenly Father, holy is your name. We thank you for your word this day. Though it is alarming, it is troubling, Father. You told us to not be frightened. So we will cast away any spirit of fear that has come among your people. We rebuke that spirit in your son's name. Your disciples are not meant to be of fear, but of love, Father. 
and that we are to exemplify what that love looks like on a day-to-day -day basis. So we thank you for strengthening us and allowing us to be so. Regardless of the conflicts that's going around us, the nations, the multitudes that are rising up in conflict, the pestilence, Father, the plague, the famines, we know what we're supposed to do. Not only we do the best to take care of our families, but we do our best to take care of others. So, Father, continue to strengthen your people and to exemplify who you called us to be. May your people hear their calling, hear their, hear their job, and get on their post. It's in Jesus Christ, heavenly name we pray. Amen. All right, peoples, go in peace.